I mean, one of the more or less hidden stories of the past generation uh, is the story of liberation theology. Uh, it's a, it just this last November, uh, there was a commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall and great celebration, you know, liberation of Eastern Europe it was nonviolent, you know, a lot of odes to love and uh, nonviolence and so on. And yeah, all more or less accurate. Uh, there was another event in, at the very same time, one week after the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, a, uh, uh, an elite Salvadoran battalion, which had just come from training, extra training, it uh, armed and trained by the United States, had just come from extra training at the Fort Bragg Special War Warfare, JFK Special Warfare School in North Carolina. Uh, they uh, broke into the university and murdered uh, six leading Latin American intellectuals, Jesuit priests, blew their heads off. Well, that was kind of like a, it was intended to be a final blow to liberation theology. Didn't quite kill it off, but it was a serious blow. Now that ended a dec brought to an end a decade in Central America of ter uh, horrif horrifying terrorist atrocities for which we were responsible. Uh, in El Salvador alone, maybe 70,000 people were killed, mostly by the U.S backed armed forces, including this elite battalion, which was the U.S. favorite, you know, the best Atacado battalion, our pride and joy, uh, killed thousands of people. Uh, that's bad enough, but it's more than that. Uh, if liberation theology grew out of an attempt by uh, Pope John XXIII to revive the Gospels, uh, there's a history of Christianity. First three centuries of Christianity, it was a radical pacifist religion, which is why it was persecuted. It was the religion of the poor and the suffering. Uh, Jesus was a symbol of the poor and the suffering. That's what the cross was. In the fourth century, it was taken over by the Roman Empire, Emperor Constantine. He turned the church into the church of the persecutors. The persecutors, the rich, the powerful, uh, the cross went from being the symbol of the suffering of the poor to the shield of the uh, forces of the Roman Empire. And for the rest of its history, that's what the church has pretty much been. It's been the church of the rich, the persecutors, the privileged, the powerful. Well, John XXIII tried to reverse that, tried to revive the church of the Gospels. Uh, this is 1962, Vatican II. Uh, the U.S. responded immediately with extreme violence. This was a heresy. The church was taking up the lesson of the, the message of the Gospels. It was called the preferential option for the poor. Can't allow that, you know. So a major campaign began. The first major step was the Kennedy-initiated uh, military coup in Brazil, it took place right after the assassination, which installed the first of the kind of neo-Nazi-style national security, terror and torture states in the region. This is a plague spread throughout the continent. It included uh, Pinochet and Chile, uh, the Argentine killers and torturers, maybe the worst of all of them, Reagan's favorites, uh, and, uh, you know, Uruguay, uh, all through the continent. Reached Central America in the, 19, in the 1980s. Then came the, that decade of horror and atrocities. And it finally ended with the uh, the murder of the uh, Jesuit intellectuals by the U.S. Uh, trained elite battalion. That's a pretty significant event in history. It's reversing an effort to restore Christianity. Did anybody commemorate that in uh, November 2009? No, that's, that's our crimes. Therefore, they didn't occur. And almost nobody knows about them. Well, you know, that was, uh, liberation theology was a a religious movement it was based on the Gospels. If that's not religious, I don't know what is. Uh, it, it was, of course, what we would call a radical movement because the Gospels are radical. It was the preferential option for the poor. We're supposed to be in favor of the preferential option for the rich. So sure, it was uh, radical, you know, Marxist, what or another epithet. Uh, but it was, in fact, the message of the Gospels. And it uh, awakened many 
currents elsewhere, including here. Well, so the the evangelical movements here are not uh, completely uniform by any means. Well, there's an element within the evangelical movements which was very much influenced by liberation theology. Now, these are the core, of the part of the core of the solidarity movements that developed in the 1980s. You know, people went down to Central America, lived with uh, poor people, uh, partly to protect them with just a white face from the U.S. run murderers and partly just to help out. And many of them are still there. It's spread throughout the world. It's part of the core of the international solidarity movement. You know, Christian peacekeepers in Hebron and so on. Uh, the Catholic bishops here were influenced by it. Uh, in fact, the National Bishops' Council took positions so radical that the press couldn't even report them. Uh, the, uh, I mean, radical by our standards, you know, like the Gospels are radical. But uh, uh, so, so, well, there's another aspect to the religious movements, a major aspect of the religious movements just of the past half century. So, you gotta keep away from cliches. This world's much more complicated.